I'm going to use a famous meme real quick. Man, they had BYU in the first half, not going to lie. But 58 points later in the second half, and BYU's on top. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is a postcast edition of the show as BYU basketball comes out on top with an 87 to 76 victory. Oh, excuse me, 87 to 75 victory, excuse me, over the TCU Horned Frogs. I didn't want to credit the TCU Horned Frogs any more than I had to, but a big win for BYU, all things considered. Considering the first half of this game, remember, we were watching this game. I was there at the Marriott Center along with 17,700 plus of you, a sellout in Provo. And the first half, BYU musters just 29 points. They shoot 12 of 30 from the field. That's 40% overall. Shoot an awful one of 13 from three. Had eight turnovers. They were trailing in fast break points, 16 to nothing. It's seemingly nothing. I mean, nothing was going right for the BYU men's basketball program against the TCU Horned Frogs. It had all of the hallmarks of a classic letdown game after that monumental win upset over uh, Kansas on Tuesday. But BYU, as they are wont to do, in the second half, the I know Robbie McCombs calls them the Death Star Cougars. I don't know what you want to term them, the Cardiac Cougars, whatever it is. They turn it on, they put on the afterburners, and tally 58 second-half points in route to an emphatic victory over TCU. The more important thing is that this win for BYU keeps them in the uh, running for a fourth place finish and potential double buy in the Big 12 Conference Tournament. Now, to get that double buy, you're going to have to beat Iowa State on the road on Wednesday night and then obviously finish up the season with a home win over Oklahoma State a week. Uh, obviously, I'm recording the Saturday night, so a week from uh, Saturday against the Cowboys. You're going to have to uh, win out the rest of the way for BYU, it feels like, to win that fourth spot. But the, it is in play. Had BYU lost this game tonight against TCU, in essence, they were essentially locked into anywhere between that five and seven spot, and we're going to get a first round buy, but likely we're going to be playing in the in the be the third round of the tournament but this is a big win for BYU because it shows that this team is learning from past failures. Remember, this is a team that not that long ago saw a double-digit halftime lead against Texas Tech just go out the window. Really, what happened against Texas Tech was almost the mirror image of what happened in this game, but just BYU on the winning end of this game. So, impressive stuff. BYU down 17 at halftime, uh, outscores TCU by double, 58 to 29 in the second half, and finds their way to get to a big win. And the other thing is BYU is now as short of at least at minimum a 500 conference record. Remember, I have been a quote unquote broken record all season long talking about the fact that I felt like BYU, the benchmark for them in this big 12 debut season was to go nine and nine in conference. Well, now they're nine and seven. They could lose out and still finish 500, but Right now, considering the circumstances they find themselves in, a huge win over Kansas Tuesday night, and then obviously following it up with this win over TCU. Anything short of at least 10 and 8 feels like a fail for BYU. So there is a lot, and I mean a lot, to be happy about this BYU basketball team. They have just completely blown all of the expectations about them all offseason long leading up to this year, have gone out the window, and this team shows time and time again that they can find new and inventive ways to win basketball games. Yes, they shot the three awful in the first half, one of 13, just brutal numbers. Trust me, any of you watched this game, and I'm sure most of you, if not all of you who are listening and or watching this, saw that. They were just just absolutely brutal. And by the way, a lot of them are really, really good looks, but BYU just could not get the basket, uh, get the ball to go into the basket and stay there. They had a couple that went in and out, but in the second half, it was an eight of 15 
uh, at one point. I remember that was the final tally, but really they turned it around. And Mark Pope said it after the game. We have faith that the, the, the numbers are going to be there, that if we continue to shoot our shots to get to generate the offense we're getting and really make it difficult on the opponent, the numbers are going to come. And they did. Uh, BYU ended up shooting, I think it was uh, 8 of 32. If I can pull up the stats, I had them up. In a, there you go. So, uh, yeah, 9 of 20, excuse me, 9 of 28 for the game. Yes, 8 of 15 in the second half, 32.1% from three. But considering the first half to second half disparity, you'll take that 32.1%. And by the way, that's another uh, mark for BYU is I think that's one of the first times in recent memory they have won a game where they've shot sub 35% from three. Uh, they obviously shot 52.5% from the field. The one thing I did like about this game as well is when the three wasn't uh, falling and before it even wasn't falling, BYU was unafraid of going to the basket against TCU. I got to give massive credit to the Horned Frogs. They came out and shot lights out from three. They don't uh, typically shoot a ton of threes. I think their average is seven made threes a game. They were seven of 10 in the first half. They ended up eight of 16 in this game. So they only made one of uh, one of six in the final half of the back half of this game. So, Really got to credit BYU for the energy that came out within the second half. They started it kind of auspiciously, a big win, a big three for Trevin Nell. And that kind of like, it felt like unlocked BYU. You're like, okay, we're okay. We're going to do this thing. That's what Mark Pope and the uh, Richie Saunders, as well as for Sandy Troyer said in the post game is that, okay, we're okay. We can hang in there. And then they went on two 16 0 runs, if I recall correctly. Just an incredible, I mean, incredible second half. 58 points in 20 minutes of college basketball is an incredible mark. If I'm not mistaken, I heard Greg Rubel say it on the radio to the BYU, and this was before BYU pulled off the, uh, the comeback. He said, I think if BYU pulls off this comeback, it will be the biggest comeback in Mark Pope's run as BYU's head coach. And Mark Pope said after the game that he can remember a lot of the big runs he had as a player and as a coach. He talked about a 31 point comeback when he was at Kentucky, a 20 some odd point comeback against UVU. He talked about the win against Dayton, uh, last year in the Bahamas when BYU was down big and rallied. This is a team that when it's on its game and it gets the, those quote-unquote afterburners going, they are unstoppable. And it was really, really impressive to see BYU do what they did in this game. So i got to give massive credit to Mark and his team. I've got three stars I want to point out that we'll get to, uh, the guys that I think should uh, get an extra shout-out. I think they're going to be easy ones for you to guess, but we'll get to all of those as we continue on right here. On Locked On Cougars. Now, a quick word on our friends over at our over at UCCU. Now, Utah Community Credit Union has been working on this for months, uh, actually well over a year now. And the best part is they have elevated their checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more, my friends, paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools. Elevated checking from UCCU is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle security and financial benefits. The security benefits alone include identity monitoring that actively scans through, th excuse me, thousands thousands of databases for early detection of possible identity theft, credit monitoring that alerts you to any changes in your credit report, dark web monitoring that alerts you if your personal information has been exposed, and identity theft resolution up to $10,000 in ID theft reimbursement and specialists to help you out recover your life. Elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following, my friends. Use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month from UCCU. Make a monthly direct deposit to UCCU of $500 or more or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500 in your account. Otherwise, UCCU and their elevated checking is just $6 a month. So visit uccu.com to sign up today or uh, stop by any branch to open an account in person today as well. It's all courtesy of UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being with us. Uh, if you are not a member of our Locked On Cougars insider group, I had a great uh, chat going back and forth with um, dozens of you, it felt like, last night at the BYU game. I'm sitting there on media row, just going back and forth. We're trading thoughts on the BYU basketball game. It's one of the unique ways uh, that that insider's group can benefit you. I'm, I'm sharing updates when I'm out of BYU football practice, literally minute-by-minute minute updates as I see them with my own eyes and passing them along to you guys. And it comes to directly to your phone via text message. It's a really fun way to interact uh, with you guys out there in Cougar Nation. If you want to be a part of it, get a 14-day free trial, and it's $5 a month afterwards. You can support the podcast financially and get some added benefit of having access to myself and the podcast a little more deeper uh, than we already have. So uh, check that out. It's in the show notes, whether you're watching this on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so three stars for me in this win for BYU over TCU. Number one, 
Richie freaking Saunders. Now they, uh, his, I think his actual middle initial is P. So Richie P Saunders, what a showing for that young man. He is energy personified for this BYU basketball team. And it's an incredible uh, run for him as a player. Remember he was kind of a bit player when he showed up at BYU off of his mission. He's really morphed himself into it. And uh, just an absolutely crucial uh, bench player for BYU. And it feels like if his uh, kind of career arc continues here, he's going to end up as, as a starter at some point for BYU. I call him the king of the junk basket. And I mean that in the kindest way possible. You think about it. Some of the baskets he makes, he really has no business making them, but he's unafraid of the moment. He just, he goes out there, plays with a, a flair and just absolutely gets the job done. He's an incredible defender. He is full of energy, as I mentioned, and I really appreciate what he brought. And especially in this game against TCU, he really helped turn things around for BYU. Second star of the night, Fuseni Traore, 21 points, and his footwork and body control remain impeccable. I had a conversation with a fellow media member. We were sitting there, and, I, and we both kind of agreed that when BYU uh, was going into the Big 12, the whole thought that Fuseni Traore is going to be able to be effective as a six foot five big man in the uber competitive Big 12 conference seemed ludicrous at the time. Well, guess what? The eggs on our face because he has proven that he can compete at this level and he has been very, very effective in a game like this against TCU. Remember, he was just incredible footwork was on point his touch was on point yes his free throw shooting at times can leave a little bit to be desired but everything that foos does benefits byu one of our locked on cougar insiders uh, pointed asked me the question early on in the game what is the biggest difference between ali khalifa and uh fuseni Troyer and their roles on this team well frankly uh fuseni Troyer is your guy that gets you buckets down in the low post he is not necessarily going to uh, run the offense the way that ali khalifa does because ali khalifa is a point center and really, you can run the entire offense through him. Whereas Fuseni is a guy who's going to post up on the low block. You toss the ball into him. And more often than not, he's going to go and find a way to get two and possibly get fouled and get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Whereas uh, Ali Khalifa will make a three and just right in your eye from the beyond the arc. It's just Fus gets the old-fashioned way. And I appreciate both of them because their styles really complement one another for BYU. And then you add in a guy like Atiki Ali Atiki in spot minutes. He's a very nice energy guy, similar to Richie Saunders. But Fus was a big, big reason why BYU won this game 21 points the majority of them coming in that second half and he was near impossible to take off the court for BYU and I I really appreciate Mark Pope saying you know what we're going to ride this pony into the ground uh, figuratively and it was a really really smart move on his part and then the final guy I'm going to give a shout out to tonight is Trevin Nell now Trevin Nell has gotten a lot of people kind of going after him similar to Dallin Hall some people think he's a complete waste of space they think he should be uh jettisoned off this roster as soon as the season ends you know what the one thing that Trevin does is he has uh and Mark Pope said it post game he's got the ability to go 0 of 4 0 of 5 in the first half and say you know what I'm going to make the next four or five or five of five. He, he's got that type of mindset. He's got the, the short memory, the memory of a goldfish, uh, to quote Ted Lasso, and it benefited BYU. He scores 20 points in this game, four of 10 from three, seven of 13 from the field, and BYU needed every one of his points it felt like in this game. Yes, I know that when he is ice cold, it absolutely hampers BYU, but when he is able to kind of spark BYU as he did in that second half, you take it every single time. So I don't think BYU has any way of winning Winning this game without those three guys, but I can't also forget other guys. Uh, Lee Cleef had some really nice passing early on. Dallin Hall had some nice shots as well. He ended up with 12 points on four or seven shooting, had seven assists. But uh, without the, th the trio of Fuseni Traore, De Trevin Nell, and Richie Saunders, I just frankly don't see any way BYU would have come back to win this game. Anybody else you guys want to shout? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Uh, we'll have another edition of Locked On Cougars, a full edition coming up on Monday. Some more thoughts on BYU football, the pro day, uh, uh, not the pro day, the NFL combine showings for Keaton Slovis, Ryan, Ryan Rico, as well as Kingsley Suamati. Yeah, by the way, uh, Keaton Slovis running a sub by 4 six forty, incredible incredible numbers for him but we'll recap all that on monday and anything you've got feel free to pass it along in the time in the kind of the interim as we uh look back on a win for byu but the good news is byu finds yet another way to win a game and they remain in the top tier of the big 12 and very much have a fighting chance as they go into a huge road game their final road game of the season as they go to hilton coliseum out there in ames iowa number eight iowa state awaits and we'll see where byu is ranked on monday uh when we uh, talk further 
about all things BYU basketball. But a big thank you as always for your support of the podcast, these postcast editions. I uh, really appreciate all y'all for being with us. Leave comments in the comment section on YouTube. Drop us a rating and review if you're watching this on uh, you uh, watching on YouTube. Also, whether you're uh, listening to it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, same deal. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for being with us right here on Locked On Cougar. So until next time, thank you once again for making it your first listen. And thank you for being everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast.